Hello. If you haven't seen the first part of my story, please watch it on my channel. You'll understand this part better. Chapter 1. How I Learn Grammar I'm studying English in London. Today, I want to share more about my life and my experiences here, especially about my amazing English teacher. You can read my story and learn English with me. After school, I start my job training at a cafe. I'm a bit worried because I've never done this before. I don't know if I can do the job well. But when I arrive at the cafe, I'm surprised. It's a modern place, very clean and nice. They sell coffee, tea, delicious chocolate cakes and tasty sandwiches. My boss is young, only 25 years old. She has worked here for two years. She knows a lot and teaches me everything. She shows me how to make coffee, the right way to wash dishes, and how to talk to customers. It's a lot to remember. At first, I only remember a little bit of what she says, but she's very patient and kind. She lets me try to do the work and helps me when I make mistakes. I'm learning fast because of her. After my first day at work, I'm very tired. But I'm also very happy. I'm happy because I have a job and I'm learning new things. The next day, I go back to school. A student in my class asks a very good question about grammar. He says, when I talk, I'm not sure if my grammar is right. Can you help me? What should I do to learn grammar? Our teacher listens and then answers his question. She says, thank you for asking. There are different ways to learn English. Some people learn to speak. Others learn for exams. The way you learn grammar can be different based on why you're learning English. She tells us, if you want to speak English, you don't need to study grammar too much. Think about how you learned your first language. You didn't study grammar books. You learned naturally by using the language. Our teacher suggests the best way to learn grammar is by reading. Books are written in correct English. When you read, you see how grammar works in sentences. This helps you learn without trying too hard. She also talks about a method called shadowing. When you do shadowing, you repeat what you hear. It helps you practice the right grammar. It feels natural. You don't have to remember rules. You just copy sentences that are correct. For students who need to pass exams, our teacher has different advice. She says, if you're preparing for an exam, study past papers. Practice with them. When you get good at those, you're ready for the exam. One student is very happy to hear this. He doesn't like studying grammar rules, but he loves reading. He says, this is great. I can learn grammar by reading books. That's easier for me. At my job in the cafe, I'm doing better every day. I can do many things by myself now. My boss still helps me when I need it. I see that the work is not too hard. Also, I get to practice speaking English with our customers. That's very helpful for me. Chapter 2. Testing my English skills. It's Monday again and I'm back in school. Our teacher asks us about our weekend. I talk about working at the cafe. I say, I was at work on Saturday. I can already do my job well. I'm happy when I talk to our customers. 
One girl in the class asks me, What happened to your voice? You sound very different from last week. Your pronunciation is very good now. I smile and say thank you. I tell them about how I practice shadowing. On Saturday evening, after work and all day Sunday, I try to speak like a native English speaker. I know it's not perfect, but I see a big change in my pronunciation. Our teacher asks if other students have tried shadowing. Three students say yes. One of them is from South Korea. He likes this technique a lot. Another student says she tried it, but it was hard. Her mouth hurt after five minutes, and the recording was too fast for her. Our teacher says, thank you for trying shadowing. If your mouth hurts after a few minutes, it's a good sign. It means you're using new muscles for speaking English. It's like exercise. At first, it's hard, but it gets easier. You can take breaks if it hurts. With practice, you will improve. She explains more benefits of shadowing. It helps with pronunciation, rhythm, and connecting words in sentences. If the recording is too fast, start by repeating just the first or last word. With time, you'll be able to say more. I agree with her. On Saturday, shadowing was difficult, but by Sunday evening, it was much easier. I could repeat a lot more. Then, I have a question for our teacher. I say, I looked at grammar in levels. It's interesting, but I don't know my level. I don't know how many English words I know. Our teacher thinks this is a good question. She tells us about another website, Test Languages. It's for people learning languages. You can take a test to see how many words you know. It's simple and only takes two steps. She suggests you can take the test every month. This way, you can see how much you improve. I'm curious to know how many English words I know. I take the test right away. I find out I know 2100 English words. Most students know between 2000 and 3000 words. Two students know 2500 words. Our teacher says, now you know your level. When you use grammar in levels, you can start with level 2 grammar and you can begin learning Level 3 Grammar 2. Chapter 3. Handling Mistakes in Speaking On Tuesday, I go to school again. A student has an interesting question for our teacher. She asks, I want to practice speaking English with people, but I'm afraid of making mistakes. I don't want to look stupid. Can you help me? Our teacher shares her own experience. She's learning Spanish and says, When I speak Spanish, I don't worry about mistakes. I just try to share my ideas. That's the most important part. She explains, Mistakes are a normal part of learning. When you learned your first language, you made mistakes, but you didn't worry about them. You just kept talking. It's the same with learning English. Our teacher believes in practicing a lot. The more you read, speak and do shadowing, the better your English will become. You'll make fewer mistakes over time. She tells us it's okay not to be perfect. Perfection comes with practice. Think about children. When they are two years old, they make many mistakes. But by three, they make fewer. And by four, they speak very well. 
You can do the same with English, she adds. You all know about 2,000 words in English. It's okay to make mistakes. As you keep using English, you'll make fewer mistakes. You can't improve without making mistakes. Our teacher gives us more advice. If you want to make fewer mistakes, read a lot. And try reading aloud. It helps with speaking. When you talk, focus on sharing your ideas. Don't worry about grammar or vocabulary. You'll learn those in other ways. She reassures us, everyone makes mistakes when learning a new language. Even famous people and leaders make mistakes. When they speak on TV, they focus on their ideas, not their mistakes. You should do the same. The student who asks the question says, Yes, thank you. That makes sense. Our teacher concludes, Don't be afraid of mistakes. They're part of learning. Just keep reading listening and speaking, and remember to practice shadowing. Final advice for learning English. In conclusion, if you want to learn English well, you should read, listen, and speak every day. Spend about 30 minutes on each activity. This will help you improve your language skills.